it's a, it's a dumpster and it's called ponderous poly or fat poly or uh, thunder pig for, for a good reason. It's a neat airplane to fly because you can fly with the cockpit windows open and your elbow out like you're driving a 51 Ford. The problems are that there's uh, no GPS, no uh, cruise control, no autopilot, no coffee pot and no bathroom. We were told uh, repeatedly that the aircraft were safe, that there was no danger of Agent Orange, even as the, the curve began going up on public understanding of Agent Orange. Specifically, we were told that our aircraft were as safe as humanly possible. Can you describe the stench or the stink of the plane? It's like sticking your head into a bottle of Roundup and gargling, and then drenching your clothing in it and wrapping a towel around your face. People would literally throw up. And one of the common denominators that was immediately clear was we had all flown the Agent Orange Spray airplane and we started looking into that issue. Folks heard that we were looking into this, other veterans, they told me that I would be running up against a guy named Al Young. with each other before that committee. We were members of the same two-person panel seated at the same table, each of us presenting uh, our view. And I preceded him saying that uh, the C-123 veterans believe we've been exposed. Why did a veteran have to do this? It's not my job to do it. It was the VA's job, not my job. It was supposed to be the VA as the advocate for my health care. If I was, if I hadn't been there on the C-123s, who else would have done it? It wouldn't have happened. So that my 2100 guys and gals wouldn't have been protected. And an individual troop shouldn't have to carry the argument. What if Private Smith or Airman Jones or Seaman Smith or whatever has a concern and isn't able to voice it effectively to the Institute of Medicine or to the VA. It's not going to get taken care of. It shouldn't have to be Stephen Smith or Erman Jones uh, or me, Wes Carter. It should be the VA. 